I, one thing I can tell you, we could care less about formality. So if you like taking your shoes off, take your shoes off. You know what I'm saying? That's about as much you can take off. You take off. For real, take your shoes off. I'll take my shoes off, praise God. But I just want to let y'all know that we are, if anybody have any popcorn, you can get some popcorn. We can have fun too, praise God. So we are here, we are just here to share the word of the Lord. Uh, God gave me a wonderful dream earlier this week. Well, not wonderful, but it's, a, it's an amazing exposure, which he gave me to really direct what today's message is about. So let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, oh God, we thank you so much. Oh, we thank you for you. God, you are the best friend. You said you are a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Closer than a brother. Closer than a brother. Closer than a brother means that you are closer to us than natural family. You said you would never leave us. God, you said you would never forsake us. God, you said that all you do is seek for us to have life and life with more abundance. So God, how much can we thank you every moment that we have breath for loving us, for caring us, for being a father to us, not some distant, distant, mystic <coughs> super God up in the sky somewhere, but a real personal father in our lives. So we bless your name, God, for who you are to us and what you want to share today. We thank you, Lord, for the souls that are here and those who are on their way, oh God, <coughs> We pray that you give strength, we pray that you give healing, that you give encouragement and empowerment to those who are here in the audience and those who are listening by live streaming today. God, we pray that people will be lifted up and that your friendship will be demonstrated and expressed and wrapped around the hearts of your people today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. All right. Do you want some water? I think we do we have any water shine Let's see if I can get a glass of water. Thank you. Praise God. A cup of water. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Here we go. Here is some water for you. Thank and you. And you can enjoy yourself. Thank you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. So. Today, I put it on Facebook, I put it on uh, our media. Our message today is called Unfriending the World. <laughs> Unfriending the World. If you go to our, my, our Live Nation page, you'll see that. And those of you who are on Periscope, get on, get on, get on. Get your friends on today as well. <coughs> Praise God. So, well, we talk about unfriending the world. I'm going to also say that. When you unfriend the world, we want to embrace the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Embrace the kingdom of God. The Lord said, we are in this world, but we are not of the world. We're just passing through. How many people went, like I remember when I was about 14 years old, my father, he took us, the whole family, on a, we had a two-week vacation and we were on the road for six, for four, 12 out of the 14 days. And I tell you, we went through every state from like Florida all the way to Las Vegas, all right? And I tell you, going through Texas, I didn't just go up to somebody and act like they were my friend, you know? You know, you had to keep your decorum about, you. yes, you deal with people. Yes, we deal with servicemen. Yes, we dealt with the police. Uh, yes, we dealt with, you know, in passing. Yes, we dealt with... The clerks, we dealt with, you know, the store owners and the gas station owners. Yes, we dealt with them. But we didn't consider them friends. You know, it was like, hey, friend, go hug them up and stuff like that. Because there was a certain level of boundary that we had because we were passing through. Someone else met from the town may have come in, and they might have hugged each other and knew each other from when they were like five years old up for like 30 <laughs> years. Yeah, that's their friend. You know, we weren't their friend. We were still kind doesn't mean that we were their friend, okay? So we have to understand that difference, the boundaries that we have. And when God says unfriending the world, he not, he's not telling us to abandon the world, you know, because we don't want to leave the world early. We don't want no premature le leaving of this place by anybody. That's not what we're saying. 
but what we're saying is that there's a boundary between God and the world. You know, there's a line that's drawn that you don't cross. And when we talk about the line, we're not necessarily talking about a physical line, but we're talking about a line in the heart. What is your heart absorbing about the world? You see, versus what's absorbing about God. So when we look at a friend defined, let's look at this. A friend defined, let me tell you this, this is gonna be fun. A person whom one knows and whom one has a bond of mutual affection. That's not a small word. Affection, that's a very big word. It's typically exclusive of sexual or family relations. They consider a friend. Either you're a friend that you feel like family or you're a friend that, that you're romantically. So that's what we're talking about. In other words, you know, if you look at synonyms, I like synonyms and expressing these things. A friend is considered a companion. A friend, a few words here, they're considered like a soulmate. A friend is considered like a confidant, someone who you can go to and talk about your personal issues or concerns, okay? A friend, God bless you, is an ally, someone who petitions on your behalf, okay? They even have the words back when I would remember, was a friend is considered a bosom buddy. I remember <laughs> when we moved uh, from, from Jersey down to Florida, I remember Eddie, my buddy Eddie, he was my bosom buddy. Man, he was just as pale, or probably more pale than Gene, I tell you. And man, we were like Miami Vice before we Miami Vice came around. I was a tall, lanky one, and he was a short, fat one. And we went around, and we were unsub, we were like buddy. He was my buddy. We, everywhere we went, we were buddies. And people say that, you're not from here, are you? Because of the friendship that we had, which was atypical. Another term for a friend <coughs> is considered like a sidekick, someone who goes through everything. People call them like my ride or die partner. <laughs> you know, we, everywhere, everywhere I go, you go going to. You know, so don't think I can get away. Okay? Another term for friend is considered a compadre, you know, a homie. And then I love this word with the millennials, my BFF. Yeah. Best friend forever. Best friend forever. I remember. Uh, you got, amen. Amen. Bless God for you. I'll tell you one thing right now. I remember there's a young girl who my wife uh, and uh, I are very close to her and her family and their godparents. When she was about, I'm not even quite two years old, I was playing with the hat, you know. You know, from she was born, it was like a friendship that we had, even though I was a big guy and she was a little baby. And I was playing with the little hat and doing stuff. And she said, You my friend. Aww. I mean, she wasn't even two years old. Her godmother was like, Wow. And I like every time she would see me, Aww. she'd be like, Mr. Oliver, Mr. Oliver. And we would have fun, we'll do all kinds of stuff. And it turned out when I was it was time for me to leave. To go to come here up to the you know the DMV area, she like you're leaving, Aww. and she said that so loud everybody heard, and like there wasn't a dry tear anywhere, Aww. and I had to take her out on a play date before I left. Aww. So we went to the we went to the movies, you know we went to the park and played on the swings. Oh, we took her to the ice cream shop. <laughs> we took her to the um, build a bear. To the build a bear. We built a bear and all that stuff, Aww. and she had a big hundred dollar bear. You know, and she was, she was just, and she, and the thing that was so touching for me was that at the end of the day, I brought her to her mother, and she didn't want to leave. She didn't want me to leave, so she wanted to run and give me a hug. But I, I helped. I told her, wait, hold on. I said, give the hug you want to give me to your mom. Aww. So she ran and tackled her mom because her mom was in, was going through cancer at the time, Aww. and the love that that little baby had. It was so big, I and mean, she still today is like a friend. Everything I like to do, she does those type of things as well, and she's a, a preteen right now. So one thing I can tell you is that dear friend is a very weighty term. Friend means that you encounter, you do things together. That means you care about one another. You care about each other's issues and things like that. 
So what happens is, what God is really giving me to tell you the world today is that many of us have become friendly with the world as if we're married to it. Everything the world does, I have to do it. Everywhere the world goes, I have to go. We have Christians, people proclaiming Christ in their churches, in their lives, but when it comes down to doing stuff in the world, they got to do what the world does. Right. Well, the world says we have to do this, so I have to do this. The world says I got to do this. You know, the world says in order for me to work in the government, I have to sign this paper. You know, I have to do this because that's what the world says. And we are so aligned in our hearts with what the world is talking about with what the world wants from us. He said, you got to be cool. You know, I was never cool. I was always a social nincompoop. You know, I never really had friends. People picked on me, and I was like an outcast. And all I want to do one day is have a good friend and have people who like me. And that's what happens with a lot of people in the world, gangs. Oh, you do got a good friend. Yes, we do. Praise God. Thank we got you. Jesus on our side. But until I came into that full knowledge, what happened was, my heart longed for somebody to care for me. So what happens is the world will come as if they care for you. They will come with the, with the sparkles. They'll come with the money. They'll come with the affection to, so that you can embrace them as a friend. But the end result of that friendship is taking you away from what God would desire of your life. And that's what we have a real serious thing we have to deal with today. Um, there is a song. I love this song. Um, I like some of the old music from the 30s and the 40s, you know, and um, especially the jazzy stuff. And the thing, there is a song by Billie Holiday from 1934 that said, The Very Thought of You, okay? And I want to just read some of the verses of this, of this song to help me with this message today, okay? This is it. When you think about this, when I read this here, I want you to think about who comes to mind, whether it's things you like in the world or your culture or things of God. What comes to your mind when I read this uh, song, okay? It says, the very thought of you, Billy Holiday, the very thought of you, I forget to do those little ordinary things that everyone ought to do. I'm living in the kind of a daydream I'm happy as a queen, and foolish, though it may seem, to me, that's everything. The mere idea of you, the longing here for you, you'll never know. How slow the moments go till I'm near to you. I see your face in every flower. Your eyes and the stars above, it's just the thought of you, the very thought of you, my love. You know, there's so many things in that, in that scripture, I mean, in that, in that song there, that we have so many people who are so affectionate. It's like, you know, we talk, yeah, she's talking about a human being that she's referring to, but if I take it as a metaphor, for whether it's the world or whether it's things for God, how many people think about God and just can't stop thinking about him? You know, think about it. This is a rhetorical question. How many people think about what they can do in the world and just can't stop thinking about it? Can't stop thinking about the club, can't stop thinking about the liquor and the alcohol, can't stop thinking about the, uh, the promiscuity out there, you know? Can't stop thinking about the social life. What comes to mind when this song says the very thought of you? What, what makes your heart just tick? <laughs> That's what God wants to know today. He wants to ask you about that today. One thing I've learned and I've seen, and especially now we're in, a, in an election season again, every four years, this nation turns upside down and goes bananas over something that is already predestined and pre-controlled. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay? Yeah. You will see friends just cut each other off. Mm -hmm. You will see family members yeah. evict each other yeah. because 
their friendship is more with somebody who's trying to go to a public office who they don't even know. <laughs> more so than the person who was born and slept in bed beside them. Separations are happening. Division. Churches are going AWOL mm -hmm. because of something that happens every four years. And now let me interject this. Do you know, um, and I do studies on this, if you've read my, if you listen to our Unmasking Culture series, we talk about popes, presidents, pharaohs, and priests, and you will know that the presidency is an office that you, you don't vote it in. It's by bloodline. How you get into the American presidency? You just don't get voted in. The, the, everybody said we had the right to vote. People died for us to have the right to vote. People died in vain because people's vote doesn't mean anything. Not in the national. Not in the national election. Because electoral colleges picks the president, not the people. And then, case an example, I'll share this with you. George Bush and, and Barack Obama were having discussions about leadership before he was even elected. Mm -hmm. Just came That's up. why it was such a beautiful election transition of process. Smooth transition. So everybody's fighting each other. Mm -hmm. It's the point. Oh, you over this side. Over you this side. You, you crazy fool. I might know you for 40 years, but you stupid. You know, and over this side, they come over here and say, you don't know, you just lost. And they all this fighting, division and separation happening yeah. over people don't even know. They consider it like it's their own family. Right. And God says, what you doing? What are you doing? Right. The Lord put in my heart this. This is what he put in my heart. Um, and this is from the Lord, y'all, because the Lord gave me a dream early this week. And he wanted me to share this. So hear what the Lord is saying. And he has Michael and Gabriel around me, want to blow the horn, he try to come at me, and he has Michael to sit there and give you a sword from the heavenly designed sword, so if you try to come at me, you know, he'll take care of you. All right? <laughs> amen. <laughs> so, amen. Angelic allies, come on with me. American patriotism has superseded God for those who consider themselves conservatives. The scripture says, when you're born again, old things are passed away, and all things become new. So things of the world are passing behind you, and things of God are before you, and that's what you press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus, as Paul has declared. But what happens is, what are we conserving? Mm -hmm. What exactly are we conserving? Many romance America as if they are married to it. People wake up with America on their mind every day, and they will defend it to their death. You talk about a president, oh, they'll come after you. You talk about Jesus. <laughs> Man, shut up with that. Go somewhere with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at the landscape of our subdivisions in our communities where we live. Every few years, we get all these signs of the times. If we could, Jesus said, if I could just give one ounce of what you give <coughs> to someone you don't even know, how do you sit there and put so much trust in someone you don't even know who can't save you, and you leave me out the equation? I'm here to be your friend. Jesus is asking the question, will you be my friend? Will you be my friend? I died for your friendship. I'm interjecting there. When did, Jesus said, when did I say for you to love your country? 